In this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut a chamfer by hand using a block plane, because sometimes you can't use a bearing guided chamfer bit in a router, as in this case, because the bearing will actually hit the bottom part of the shiplap, or on the other side, the mating one, you can't actually get the bearing to ride along the edge because there's not enough material for the bearing to actually seat up against. So let's get to this. It's pretty simple and I think you'll like it. The goal is to have an end result that looks like this where your shiplap has about a sixteenth of an inch gap and to have a chamfer on this seam rather than just having plain square stock like this where you still have a gap but there's no chamfer on the top. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is give yourself some guide marks to work to. Now, I've set my marking gauge at a sixteenth of an inch. So we're just going to go up the side here at a sixteenth of an inch. Now, I'm going to go along the other edge as well here because we need to make sure that we make that chamfer at 45 degrees or equally spaced from each surface. Because they're hard to see, I'm just going to use a mechanical pencil because the leads are fairly sharp. And I'm just going to go down that marking gauge line using my middle finger as a bit of a fence down the side of that board. And the same thing right here using my middle finger like a fence just to help guide my pencil right along that marking gauge line. The next step is actually putting the chamfer on the board with the block plane and you're gonna to wanna to hold it at 45 degrees, which is not as difficult to do as what you might think. So you're gonna hold it at 45 degrees and plane with the grain. Now this particular board has a bit of a grain change at this end. So I think I'm gonna get tear out on the last few inches, but that's okay for the first couple passes because we can learn just how the grain is gonna be on this board. And you can run the plane completely parallel to the side or you can skew it a little bit which is what I'm going to do to try and minimize the tear out. So let's run down here on a 45 degree angle and skew it a little bit and hopefully we don't get tear out. It didn't feel like it tore out there like what I'm predicting but it may take two or three runs down that board until we see that happening and I'm using my index finger against the face of the board as a bit of a fence to maintain the angle all the way down the length of this board that we're trying to put the chamfer on. And when I look at that edge, I don't think I'm getting tear out anywhere. So I think we're safe to continue doing things the way that we are. And I'm just trying to work to those pencil lines I put on there. And I'm going to work until I get them to just disappear. And we're almost there. Maybe I am getting a little bit of tear out down there at that end. So I think what I'm going to do is come at it from the other side here, just for the first few inches. Good, and that's got it there. Now we'll just get this other part of the chamfer to meet up. I'm trying to lift off like an airplane taking off to meet where I planed from the other direction. I think I've got it there. Here's the end result. We've got that 45 degree chamfer all the way from one end to the other. A little tough to get it on camera in great, great focus, but with a little bit of practice and a little bit of refining how you're holding your block plane, and using one of your supporting fingers as a bit of a fence, you'll get a nice 45 degree angle all the way down. And you can make these chamfers as wide as you want, just depending on whatever application or look you're wanting to go for. If you've never tried this before, give it a shot because it is super easy, lots of fun, and it's gonna put a smile on your face anytime you start using hand tools. Until next time, go build something beautiful.